Laura Caulfield and welcome to Dialogue. We're here at the Ojai Film Festival with Academy Award nominee cinematographer Ellen Karras. Welcome. Thank you. Thank so you. you have a panel that you just finished up this afternoon. What was that like? Um, well, it was more like a master class to me. You know, I'm used to speaking to people about what I do and for me, the most important thing to talk about is the idea of how cinematography is a vis using visual metaphor in film to convey meaning. One of the approaches that I've always taken as a cinematographer is how I can conceptually use the camera to create visual metaphor. So how can I use the camera to tell the story as much as the words can tell the story? Mm -hmm. So, and that's a really key thing, I think, in cinematography, is that the image literally does tell a thousand words, and that you can create meaning with just what you're putting in the image. How have you found it to be a female cinematographer in a very male-dominated industry? Well, you know, it's funny because I never really thought of myself as a female cinematographer, I just thought of myself as a cinematographer. Right. And um, I always wanted to just think and talk about the work. And I think that that's you know, been important for me because um, I was very lucky early on that some of my early work was recognized and awarded. So I got a lot of awards for certain first films that I shot. And um, the first documentary I shot won 25 awards internationally, and That's I won right. the Student Academy Award for it. So people have recognized my work early on, and so I was had a lot of uh, advantage, so to speak, in being able to have opportunity given to me that normally may not have happened. You know, I mentor a lot of young cinematographers, both men and women. Right. But. Um, you know, what the real key thing is having opportunity. So there are women who can actually do the job, like myself. They just need the opportunity to be able to show that they can do the job. And also to gain the commensurate experience with, you know, progressing and getting bigger and bigger films or, you know, more complex projects and that kind of thing. What's been key for me is that in talking about a project or talking about a script with a director, or producers, um, I always talk about the ideas. I talk about what the meaning is behind the ideas. And that meaning and that intention informs what the cinematography is gonna be. For me, it's the cinematography isn't a set thing for every single film. I may not use the same lenses for every single film because each story has its own unique painting palette. I got a call from uh, the late Ted Demi uh, to come and be part of this film called Blow. And I have to say, of all the films I've ever done, I had probably the best time on <laughs> Blow than any movie because Ted was, he was like a, a circus performer and <laughs> ringmaster. You know, he was a really funny guy. And he had this idea of what he wanted to do for this film. Um, and we, and the group of us who were around him all became very, very close friends, and we still are very close friends. And when Ted died the year and a half after this film came out, you know, we were all devastated. He died at the age of 38 from a heart attack. And, um, but the thing about this film for me as a cinematographer uh, is that it posed a lot of different challenges, and that is there were five periods that we were looking at in this film. My challenge was, how do I create a look for each of yeah. these periods without it looking like five separate films? So um, I had to do a lookbook, and that's the other thing that a cinematographer does, is oftentimes you'll create a lookbook of different clippings, uh, pictures, clips of movies, whatever, and I, I, Ted couldn't visualize how it was gonna look, so I had to make a huge binder of each of the periods and what I was gonna do. And what that did is it really helped me to understand what the lighting was at that particular time, what the colors were at that particular period, um, how people saw the world, basically, and then how I could capture that with the lenses, with the film stocks. Yeah. And I decided that I was going to use different lights for each period, so that in the 60s wow. I would use tungsten lights. 
and I would use a heavy yellow backlight and I would, you know, we would design the wardrobe a certain way and I would use certain uncoated lenses. And then, so the lenses at that time were not coated, meaning that they, they were prone to having flares. So now the lenses have a coating on them to reduce the amount of light that comes in, the amount of flares. In the 70s, I was going to use uncoated lenses, and I was going to use magenta filter. So all of everything was changing. 90s, I used a different film stock. I used Fuji as opposed to Kodak. We were about three days, three days, two days, three days away from the end of the camera prep. And I go to Panavision in Wilton Hills to go and, and check up on what's going on and to say hi to everybody and to see my camera assistant, Baird Stepto. And uh, Bob Harvey, who was um, overseeing Panavision at the time, and Lori, I think you were around too. We were, we were around, it was about five o'clock in the evening, and we were having wine. And, and uh, Bob says to me, he goes, so, he goes, why aren't you shooting anamorphic? And I was like, oh. yeah, you know, I, I had never considered anamorphic because it seemed to me to be like up there. The, you know, anamorphic, it's just like, that's, those are big movie, those are big movie <laughs> images, those are big movie lenses. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, it would be my dream to shoot anamorphic. <laughs> and so Baird, who's a camera assistant, gives me a cross-eyed look, like, are you kidding? Because normally in an, an anamorphic show, you have two weeks of prep, because the lenses, you have to calibrate the lenses and everything. And Lori looks at me, she starts laughing. And, and I said, God, can I shoot anamorphic? And Bob's like, yeah, sure. And everybody's going like, ah! <laughs> so sure enough, Panavision managed to turn it around. And not only did they turn around all the anamorphic lenses, but they had Dan Sasaki, who was their tech, rebuild some of the old lenses. So, you know, they managed to churn this out in three days. And I'm really, really glad that I shot anamorphic. For me, it opened up a whole other world. Do you like shooting digital versus old school 35? I mean, is there a distinction for you? Um, yeah, there is a distinction. Um, it really depends. Uh, again, I think it depends on the project. You know, if I'm going to do a lot of night shooting, I would think that I would tend towards going towards digital. But digital has a different feeling than film. I miss film. Uh, there are things I miss about film. I actually just shot some film this past weekend with Spike Lee. I don't shoot that much anymore, but I shoot for certain people like Spike and Marty. Spike calls. Marty. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, Marty and was Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the thing about film has a more rounder feel to it. I mean, what people are getting used to now is in digital, it's so hyper sharp because of the increased resolution. So everybody gets used to it. And I know that when we were making the transition from film to digital, all the camera assistants were freaking out because the focus is so much more critical when you can see more detail. So, you know, in film, you know, the, you'd be able to see that ping in the eyes, but now it's so critical. That's why all of them use monitors and they have their face plastered in the monitor. So. It's, it's, it's a really different way of shooting now. Um, digital also is really great in the darkness. That's the biggest thing, I think, about digital is that, you know, if you have a, a, a digital camera, I mean, you can increase the sensitivity and, and you can almost see into the darkness, you know, whereas before, if you didn't put light on it, you probably wouldn't see it because the film stock wasn't that sensitive. But you know, not everything is about resolution in my mind. I mean, for me, it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go to 8K to make something look interesting. In fact, when I transferred my film, my film, Narakun, I had the option of scanning it or doing a transfer on a spirit, which was, um, it's, it's a, a, a film to tape transfer. It doesn't put it into the digital realm. And so I did a test, and I knew that I was going to want to go to the old style, the spirit, which was like film. You know, it, I mean, I shot everything on film, most of it on film, and some of it on digital. But 
So the operators at Deluxe couldn't believe that I didn't want to scan the film. What do you mean you don't want to scan the film? You have greater latitude. And I said, no, but it's a different feeling. I mean, look, and so I had to put it up on the screen. I said, the, the highlights have a different feeling. So when you scanned it, you could see much more detail, but it felt hard and it felt, it felt, uh, I don't know, crusty. It didn't, it didn't feel, you know, enveloping and round. And I wanted it to have that roundness of, about it. So what's next for you? Are you directing and producing? Uh, I've been directing a lot for the past three years. Great. Pretty much primarily directing. Um, I, I was given an opportunity to direct two episodes on a, on a TV series that they wanted me to shoot. I wasn't able to shoot it, and so I met with them anyway and talked to them about the ideas because they knew they wanted to pick my brain about what I thought and the ideas I had for the series. And so six months later, they turned around and they asked me to direct two of the episodes. And from then, I went on to direct two of the episodes of Ozark for the first series, for the first season. And since then, I've directed for Legion, uh, Umbrella Academy, which is a Netflix show that's about to come out. Oh, and great. I just recently directed two episodes of Catch-22, which is a limited six-part series. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. And we, we look forward to seeing all of the things that you continue to do. Thank you.